Now guys, let me show you how to install all of these parts correctly onto your DIY. So guys, to make this easier for you, I have uh, measured the distance between the end of the axle to where you should put just a quick mark and that will determine where roughly you need to install the motor mount. This will be your starting point. Please watch my video on how to make the torque boards work with the AT setup because you have to do a bit of alteration. Which comes out very nicely if you follow my video. So, after you've done the alteration, what you need to do is you need to mark yourself a little line at 83 millimeters from the tip of the axle. Guys, before you install the adapter for the torque boards uh, trucks, what I'm usually doing is something plastic. I'm using just a uh, plastic uh, package that the carpenters use and a big flash screwdriver and then you twist the screwdriver and you open up the adapter just a little bit to make it slide over your trucks better so you don't damage the coating. The adapter goes only one way around because of the shape of the trucks. So after the adapter is installed roughly to the line I've told you to, what you do is you take the motor mounts and you catch the screws just on the tips of them, as little as you can. The way the motor mount goes over is the width cut out for the motor inwards. And now you put the motor mount over the adapter and now it's spinning around because it's not tight. You will need four millimeter allen key. I'm going to be using the ratchet. Position the motor mount roughly where you think it needs to go and tighten up the allen keys just slightly to stop it from moving around. You don't have to do this you can use the blue block but all I've decided to do is I'm actually going to use the uh, split washes or the lock washes uh, on these bolts for the motor mounts and that will keep them nice and tight without dropping out when you're riding so do that next thing you do guys is just tighten up uh, the bolts as much as you can this is going to compress the adapter and when you loosen up the bolts again for final adjustments it'll be much easier for you uh, to move around the uh, motor mount. Otherwise at the moment even with the bolts being loose the motor mount does not want to spin all the way around. So you tighten it up, get the adapter to sit and you loosen up again to the point where you can move the motor mount freely. So now we're going to pre-mount this gorgeous motor. The motor mounts, when you buy them, do come with the screws you require to mount the motor mount, the motor to the motor mount. So just slide the motor in. Make sure you get your cables to the position where you want them later. You have to think on how you're going to dress up all the cables. I normally have them just straight forward, and the cables will come out on the side into the C enclosure. And then you just catch the screws, don't over tighten them, just so you can get the motor adjusted and adjust the belt tension. So the motor mount and motor screws are now caught. Just slightly, I can still move the motor up and down, that is awesome. Everything is now still loose. We're going to take the screws out later and put some uh, blue block on them to keep them intact, but you need to get all your adjustments right first, then you tighten everything up. Next thing, as I mentioned before, this one, this motor here, uses the key system. The key is a little tiny metal piece like this. You can buy them separately for any motor you want. It slides into the cut, 
inside the axle of the motor. Sometimes you need to tap it just slightly to make it sit. And you're going to use your belt pulley of your liking. I bought this from Streetwing as well. I do cover this in my video 00, so take a look. So you slide the motor over the key, and that's pretty much a perfect way of stopping the pulley from spinning around on the uh, axle itself because the key will stop it. Perfect. Now, what we need to do is we need to ensure that we fix this pulley a little bit away from the uh, motor mount so when it spins around it does not rub so I like leaving it about a millimeter two millimeters away so when you shine your torch you will see the gap spin the motor because sometimes the motor pulley could be not straight make sure it does not rub at any position and now we're going to fix the pulley to the position we want. You will notice that there are two little grub screws. We'll take them out. These grub screws do not hold the motor pulley from spinning around. They only hold them in position so the motor pulley doesn't move. I will definitely going to use some blue block. Guys, do not use red block on your thread. You will never take it off again. So little dab of blue block back into the hole and tighten it up do not go mad you don't have to go crazy about it just hand tight and just a tiny pinch done and now let's do another one there are two I like this a lot two fixing points perfect so the motor pulley is now on and the blue block is drying. What we need to do in the meantime is I'm using the AT uh, kit from Evolve. Before I put it all together, there's a couple of things I want to do. Because I bought this kit used, I'm just going to make sure that the seat for the uh, bearings is nice and clean. I'm also going to give it a nice clean and wipe to the Evolve uh, bearings. They still look very good and in good condition. I'm also going to apply a bit of speed cream on my bearings. Spin them. So it's pretty much like a little maintenance, but why not to do it right now while you have your board apart and give her the best chance to give you a performance that you're after. So, bearings are done. There's another bearing that's inside the uh, belt pulley, the wheel pulley itself. Let's put a bit of uh, lubricant on that as well. And now, let's assemble it. So I do use a bit of uh, multi-purpose grease and I'm going to put it on this rod here, on the axle itself. Very, very tiny little film because this board will definitely gonna be going off-road and I wanna give her a best chance not to get all corroded. So, next step, speed washer. Then the wheel pulley. Before you put wheel pulley on, you take the belt, put the belt over the motor pulley and now you catch your pulley and the belt. You might have to lower the motor just a little bit. Okay, beautiful. So now you do just a quick check. So your motor is fixed uh, to the trucks and obviously to the motor uh, mount. Your motor pulley is fixed, you spin it around, pretending like you are on a board, and now you will look at your pulleys. So your wheel pulley is absolutely fine, spinning freely, 
but you will notice that the belt is only sitting quarter or three quarters of the way onto the pulley. That means that our motor mount needs to go that way. And this is why we did not tighten up the bolts yet. Let's move the motor mount that way a bit. So when the belt is running, it's going to be covering the whole surface. So I've moved the uh, motor mount just slightly, about three millimeters to the right. Next step, we're going to take the wheel. Our bearings are now soaked up all the uh, lubricant. Put them together. I'm also replacing the original Evolve uh, spacer, bearing spacer, which is just a straight tube, to this uh, skirt or the balance spare spacer. I'm sick of those spaces falling aside when I'm trying to reinstate the wheel and creating complete nuisance. If you want to know more about the spaces, take a look on my channel. I've got a series of videos called Did You Know? I cover all of this stuff in them videos. So, we put the wheel on the axle. There we go. And guys, since you already have uh, the motor mounted, you don't have to do this, but I always do. Just get those cables nice and tidy somewhere. Tie them around together on the other side of the deck so they're not on your way, so you don't damage the connectors. That's what I do, but it's up to you. So now with the wheel on, you do exactly the same test. You spin the wheel exactly the same way as it's going to be when uh, you're uh, running the board and you wash the spaces. Do it for a couple of minutes. And then you check. To be honest with you, I am happy with the way the belt is sitting. I am happy with the way the motor pulley is sitting. It's perfect. That's exactly what I want it to be. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tighten up the wheel make it all sit tight, check it again. So I normally just tighten up the wheel as hard as it can go because I was taking the bearings out and everything else I want to make sure everything sits in perfectly so it can all go no, no more and then come back let's say half try spinning it a bit tight loosen up again, try spinning it if it's nice and free, perfect Try for the movement of the wheel, nothing is loose, perfect. I think I just go back just a little bit more. It's not wobbling, but now it is spinning very, very nicely. The only thing I've just noticed, as you can see, at certain point, and it could be because of the tire not being straight, the motor pulley and the tire clash. They still go by, but they are rubbing not good and this is why a guy's saying you have to test 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 and test so now what we're going to do is i can see we got a bit of space here in the motor pulley and this is about three millimeters we could go backwards with the motor mount and actually release this rubbing so i have adjusted the motor mount just slightly backwards to get the space i wanted to mention something guys when you tighten up the motor mount Always go one turn, one turn, one turn, one turn. You want this gap here to be equal on both sides. So don't just tighten up one side all the way through. That's just no good. So a little bit there. A little bit there. A little bit here. A little bit there. And this is why I told you, or recommended you, to use the washer and the uh, split washer or the locking washer. Because you have to take these uh, motor mounts or loosen them up quite often just when you set it up. After that you could blue block it if you want. So guys, it's much better and there is no uh, rubbing here anymore between the tire and the, uh, the motor pulley. Looking at it right now, after I tighten everything up, spinning the motors, the belt sits quite nicely, nothing is rubbing, same as the other side. And that's the way I'm going to leave it. I need to test the board out, let everything settle in, but at the moment, tiny little gap there, 
tiny little gap there where you can still see the teeth it's pretty much equal about a uh, half a millimeter belt is overhanging the pulley but it's a 15 millimeter belt so I'm not very worried about that let's test the board further and uh, see if we need to do any adjustments but principle is there and that's how you put it together so next step next step is to finish fixing the uh, motor to the motor mount remember we only had it hand tight let's take the wheel off you have to take the wheel off because you have to reach the screws to get the uh, belt tension right so guys for me the belt tension is right is when you can press on the belt and you can still see some free movement in this particular situation here the wheel pull is so large and you have such a good engagement with the teeth and amount of teeth that are being engaged is pretty much this whole part of the pulley so I'm not very worried about the tension meaning I'm not going to make it too tight it's M5 belt so the teeth are quite deep and you don't want to stretch the belt too much you will put your motor under stress you will put everything under stress so the way I do it is I feel it I feel and to see if the wheel is spinning freely if the motor is spinning freely and it doesn't have any kind of grinding or stressful sounds to it so take a look carefully this is how much movement you've got on the belt when it's set up correctly you can always always come back take the wheel off loosen up four screws and tighten the belt even more if you have to the way you'll find out is when you brake hard you will hear it jump in the teeth but it's very rare that happens so now what we're going to do is because I'm happy with the tension of the belt and I got my four screws hand tight I'll take one screw out at a time apply blue block and put it back in and that's pretty much it please remember guys when you work with the motor mount always keep an eye on the alignment of the motors you want them nice and straight parallel to each other you don't want them one lower one higher one thing to mention is that I don't know what deck you're going to use but you have to remember they need to check the bite of the motor to your deck because the motors are located on the uh, trucks when you turn the angle that the motors end up towards the deck changes so you have to make sure that the spinning motor will not hit the deck so guys that's it for this video I really hope you enjoyed it I really hope this video will be helpful to all of you out there who wants to build your own board as you can see the motor is now on and the drivetrain is pretty much there just waiting for the deck I got something interesting coming out as you already know if you watched all my videos we will be skinning the deck the bottom of the deck was carbon fiber to make it stronger so I don't have the same happening to me again when the deck snaps please do me a favor take a look at these two motors here so two different types of coating this one here an anti-scratch rhino skin or a carbon fiber look vinyl I have finished one off with a clear rhino skin that's like a protective film same as you get on your iPhone or Samsung smartphone uh, uh, front so you don't scratch it and another one with a vinyl uh, combo fiber look coating let me know what do you think I should use the clear so you can see the manufacturer's name of the motor or the carbon fiber and that's what I'm going to do then anyway as always ride safely stick around subscribe like dislike 